Okay, in this video, we are going to be looking into building a DTMF decoder. Now, DTMF stands for Dual Tone Multifrequency, and those are the tones you hear when you make a phone call on your touch tone phone. Now, this little module here is available online, and it uses the MT8870 DTMF decoder chip, which you can see here. It's made by Mitel, which is a Canadian telecom company. Now if you look at the very bottom, you can see the header pins. Now if we start at the very right, there's VCC, that's plus 5 volts, and then we have ground. Then we have input, that's where we input our DTMF audio tones. Then we have two steering pins. One is active low, one is active high. And they go active when there's a valid DTMF tone present. Then we have the four data lines, Q4, Q3, Q2, and Q1. So it, so it outputs a binary a 4-bit binary data output corresponding to each button on the keypad. So we're using a 12-button keypad which has rows and columns which has uh, the rows of the low group frequencies and the columns of the high group frequencies. And when you press a button we'll have a high group and a low group tone uh, being present and then it will output a DTMF binary output from Q1 to Q4. So we'll power up this module and we'll have a look at its operation. Okay, I have my DTMF decoder powered up. And it's connected to a DTMF encoder, which you can see here. It's a 12-button uh, encoder. Now you could get 16-button encoders, which have A, B, C, D buttons. And I actually have a D button wired in on the, on the side of, the, of this uh, encoder. So when I press a button on the keypad, I'll get an indication on my DTMF decoder. So we have 0 to 9, and we have a star or asterisk. And we have an octothorpe, or sometimes called a number sign, pound, or hashtag. So every one of these buttons has a, has a, a binary code. Now when I press any of the buttons, the very left LED is our, our steering uh, LED, which is our data valid LED, which means there's a valid uh, DTMF tone being entered. So if I press a button and hold it, you can see the very left LED comes on, as long as I'm holding the button, indicating a valid DTMF tone. And the rest of the... LEDs, the four, will give our binary output. So if I block that very left one so I don't confuse everybody, so we'll start at number one, one button, two, three, and then D is all zeros. So you can see our binary output with our steering output. So with this data, we could actually hook it up to an Arduino Nano and decode DTMF digits. Okay, I have my DTMF decoder connected to my Nano and the Nano is powering the DTMF decoder with 5 volts and I have my encoder connected up to the DTMF uh, decoder. You can see here, this is the audio input. You could also uh, input the audio tones through this audio jack on the top but I'm using the header pins. So we'll enter some DTMF tones into the decoder and we'll let the Nano uh, decode those tones uh, with some software. Okay, I have TerraTerm up and running on my computer, and it's connected to my Nano. And I have some software running that will decode the tones. So we'll enter some tones on the keypad, and we'll watch the software decode those tones. So we'll start off with number one, two, And we'll use the D button on the side of my encoder. So there we are. There's our code that's decoding the DTMF from our DTMF encoder. Okay, here's the code running my Nano. Now it's written in Flashforth, but you could use any language of your choice. And you could use a similar uh, code. So the first word is DV question mark, which is data valid question mark. So that will give me a true flag whenever there's a valid data, when there's a valid DTMF tone. And the next word is read digit. So it's going to read the 8-bit GPIO port at address hex 26. And I only need the low nibble. I don't need the all 8 bits. So I'm using hex 0F with an AND function that will take off the high nibble and just give me the lower nibble, so the 4 bits that I need. I have a word called button press. That'll give me an indication when a button is being pressed, and give me and this one will give me an indication when a button is being released. Then I go into a case statement. So I give that four-bit data to the case statement. If it sees a one, it's going to print one. 
And if it sees a 2, it's going to print 2. And it goes all the way down to the bottom. If it sees a 0, it will print a D. So that covers all the digits. So the main program is called test. And it's a begin again loop. It's a continuous loop. So it waits for a button press. And when it gets a button press, it will read the digit and give that 4-bit data to the case statement. Then it will display that digit. So it will display it which we saw. It will do a carriage return and it will wait for the button release and after a button is released it will go back to the beginning and waiting for a button press. It will do that over and over again and display all the digits on the DTMF encoder. Okay I have a very simple program running on my Nano that will decode the digits 0 and 1. So 1 will turn on this LED which it could be a relay and 0 will turn off the LED. So if I, if I hit the digit 1 LED comes on, digit 0, off. Now any other digit won't work. It has to be digit 1, turn on, and digit 0 to turn off. Now to make it more secure, we could make up a code 123 to turn it on, and 789 to turn it off. Okay, here's a basic block diagram of our setup. So we have the DTMF decoder, and we have the Arduino Nano, both powered by 5 volts. Now when we input a valid DTMF tone, into the decoder. The decoder will output a 4-bit binary code and latch it and that's that's connected up to the GPIO port of the Nano. Now when this is latched then the ST, the steering pin, will go low indicating it's a valid tone into uh, one of the GPIO pins of the Nano. So the Nano is always watching for the ST to go low. It's in a loop and when it sees ST go low it means it's a valid tone. Then it will read the 4 bits into the port. Now this port is an 8-bit port so we mask off the higher nibble and we take the lower nibble so we just have the 4 bits. Now the, de now the Nano could take that data and decode it and then turn on pin 13 to turn on the LED. Okay here's another DTMF decoder which I have built. So here's a DTMF decoder chip with the color burst crystal and the heart of the circuit is a parallax basic stamp. Now this contains a PIC microcontroller with an onboard basic interpreter. Here's my reset switch. Here's my output LED, which I could have connected up to a relay and will turn on when we decode our digits. And I have two test switches. Now the first one will actually manually turn on the load, will turn on the output LED. There it is, it force it on, and the second one will turn it off. Now the input to this DTMF decoder is connected up to output of a receiver, the DMOD output of a receiver, a radio receiver. So now we could activate this DTMF decoder wirelessly with a 5 watt portable radio like this here. So we could use this in an amateur radio station to control a repeater. So right now I have it set up for 1, 2, 3. We'll turn on the LED. LED comes on. And 4, 5, 6 will turn it off. Do that again. On, off. Now to program the DTMF decoder for a different sequence of, of numbers, we could use our two test switches. So if we go into reset, turn on the first switch, now I'll, I'll punch in 321 for on. Release the switch and power it up with this other switch on. That will be your off and it will make that 654 and release. Now I'll reset the microcontroller. Now the code should be 321. Turns on and 654 off. So there we go. There's another way we could decode DTMF digits. Okay, so that was my little primer on DTMF decoding. So you could use the microcontroller of your choice and the programming language of your choice and come up with your own setup using this little DTMF decoder. And you could build yourself a little remote DTMF system.